Hi, the Messy Coder here, back again with another video. This time we're playing about with the FPS sample from Unity. They've taken Unreal and their own game by making their own game. That's right, it is a FPS multiplayer game that we can play about. We can download the entire project and learn how to make a game like this using Unity 2018.3 Beta. And I've actually downloaded the Beta number 7, which came out in October 2018. If you are watching this, Ooh, in the future, we're going to learn how you can set up this project on your own computer, make a build and play about with some friends. Hopefully my friends will be playing about together live on stream this week. Well, this week's not really helpful. If you're in the future, it could be in the past and you missed it. Never mind. Hopefully you'll play another sub Saturday or on a Friday on Twitch or the w.twitch.tv slash the messy coder. So sit back, enjoy, shooty shooty bang bang, and I'll see you all in a second. So we're going to help everyone how to make this FPS sample on their own computers. Can you see the robots? Yeah. Yeah. So everyone, Theo and I are going to help you how to get started using the FPS sample made by Unity Technologies. Pop over to unity.com slash FPS sample. And if you go down the bottom, we're going to find a blue button. Can you see where the blue button is? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Let's click it. Now we're in GitHub. If we pop down here, we're going to read something very important. It's going to tell us that we need to do two things. One of them is that we can't use the green button to download it. We can't use this one, it won't work. And we also need to make sure that we installed this, G, this Git LFS. Do you know what that is? Yeah. It's for large file support, isn't it? Large file support? Yeah. So let's okay. click that, download and install this. And then once we've got it, we're ready to go. Also, I'm using Git Tortoise. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Yeah, Git Tortoise. We can use Git Tortoise to put clone Git projects on our computers. So let's also. Next thing that we're going to do. Daddy? Is, yes. This bag is empty. It is empty, darling. I've eaten all those crisps. So let's go up to the top here and click this. And we're going to copy this here. So grab that. Now we're going to pop over into a folder. I've got this one set up here called Unity Technology. I'm going to right click my mouse. Over here on Git Tortoise, you see this settings and help. I'm just going to click Git Clone. And Git Tortoise now is asking me if I want to clone this. And I've got here my page. It's automatically put in the one we copied. So we've got now Unity Technologies FPS sample and tick this LFS. This is that large files that we were talking about a second ago. And then we're going to click OK. And you'll see all of this nonsense going on and let it finish and come back in about 10 hours time. Now it takes about half an hour. Probably quicker depending on your machine or slower depending on what you've got on your internet. Very important fact is got here it says the project size should be about 18 gig. Now if it's smaller then you likely didn't have that LFS software you just downloaded when we cloned. Remember you've got to tick that little tick box. So make sure your project is about 18 gig. Also make sure that you're using 2018.3 version 6 of the beta and above. So I'm using version 7. And also we're going to have this little thing here. We're opening the project for the first time. Let's read it together. Let's read it together. The following guide should take you to the point where you can hit play in the editors and run around levels and also build a download version of the game. It's exactly what we want to do. The first time you open the project, you need patience. It takes a while to import all of the assets. It takes ages ages as it takes ages to do it I can't emphasize enough how long that took it took me a long time and i've got a little bit of a beast of a machine not a massively beast of a machine a little bit of a beast of a machine now we need to once you've got it all we need to find our prefabs re-import them find our models re-import them as well and then if you're ver using a version older than beta 6 you've got a few crashes uh, i wouldn't advise using a version older than beta 6 there's no need to stop it don't do it Slap on the wrist. Why are you doing that? And then, once we're in, we'll start playing about with this part. Here we are, inside Unity, after what feels like an eternity from loading up the project. And you're going to find a load of weird errors 
one of these cannot set mode of files in offline mode. I'm going to scroll down here. See all of these warnings? Got a lot of warnings. And screaming children. Here, a lot of notes. And we've got, actually, let's hide those. So we can just read these errors. Don't worry. After we've restarted Unity, most of those errors will magically disappear. And the one we're going to be dealing with mostly right now is that offline mode one. Well, you're going to have to pop over to hit Window. Go down to Asset Management. Click Version Control. And you're going to see this little strange thing here. So indeed, pop over here to settings and you'll see that it's got this perforce mode in version control. I'm going to put this over here to visible meta files and I'm going to make sure this is selected on force text and that's all you need to do. Suddenly, like magic, everything will be fine. If I put this back to how it was, you see this? Under version control, check out this asset in order to make changes and I put it to here. Suddenly, that message is gone. Wonderful, wonderful message is gone. All right, I had to restart Unity, and while restarting Unity, all of the errors that I had in the console have gone. There were stuff about maxing out shaders and annoying things like that. If we pop up and we see these errors again, we can always report them to Unity. All right, that was quicker than I thought, and I'm going to go over here, say model, go right up to the top, click it, go all the way down to the bottom, hold down shift, click it, and I do it again, right click. Uh, it takes a bit of time and then click re-import and I'll go and have a cup of tea and when we come back we'll start playing about with the project tools window. I'm going to go over here to FPS sample and you see this little windows here projects tools. I'm going to click that and I'm going to drag that over here. Let's drag it about here. Now over here you'll see that we've got update registry. You only need to click this magic update registry button if you've added in new game elements like you put a character or you replicate an entity or a hero definition as it says in the manual. So if you've added anything funky to your game you can just click this update registry and away you go. Uh, I'm going to click and open up this level 00. zero. Okay, and we can have a play about in the preview. That's what it tells us to do in the readme. So we're going to do it. Let's make this a little bit bigger here. Make this full screen. And I'm going to click on play. And hopefully we'll see the console magically appear. There it is. And we're in. And we've got an error in the console about game tick 2 but current state is tick 0. I've got no idea what that means. We can Google that and find out later what that's all about. It's very pretty. Very pretty indeed. Very shiny, shiny. Okay. Now, if we click on this all force, it's going to go and bundle everything together. Uh, it's going to take a while. So, click on that all force. Go have yourself a cup of tea. Go have a biscuit. And I'll see you all in a moment. All right. Now we've got all force completed. That's fantastic. We've got our levels and assets into asset bundles. Okay. Now we're going to sit and click this build game and the build game is going to make a folder in here called auto build and our build game is going to be in there. Also down here we've got some more things that we can play about with in a second and I'll show you just those. We're going to be coming across some weird errors as we do all this stuff. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. If you look on the GitHub issues section and if you look on the Unity forum you'll see a lot of different people raising it, um, bugs and errors that they've come across and at the end of the day there's a way past all of those so you can set yourself up and play this game very quickly and enjoy yourself and have fun we're not going to get into how all of this stuff works in this video we're not going to get into uh, looking through all the code and customizing this just yet we can play about that later on but for now we're just going to play about with actually making a build so you can test this out and play about with friends because at the end of the day what's the point of having this if you can't play this you know what i'm talking about you want to go around and shoot each other and jump up and down and, and things like that all right so well now we can click this big green button before i do i want to show you a couple of things if i untick headless server you'll see this change here if i click start then i'll actually have two application windows running um, and one of them would look a bit weird as it would be the server and the other one would be us running around and if i have this change to client you'll see the editor when i click play you'll be able to see stuff in here the little end is the window i'm going to move this to unused and put this back to headless server 
I've got here batch mode, no graphics appears, and it's set to one client. That way we'll have one application window load up with the game. And if we, while that's loading up, you can see here, this is the console for the server. As it's in headless mode, you don't see the actual game, you just see its little console. I've got this weird error again there, and client zero is ready. I'm in, and I'm running around. Now if I escape, click exit game, wonderful. And if we pip pop, pip pop, pop over to, yeah, here we go, and I click run, everything should be exactly the same, shouldn't it? You'd think. But actually we get two errors. We get one error here that it can't find a user config, one error here saying it can't find the game config. Easy to fix those ones, and I'll show you why. If we pop over here to the start, and I'll make that big again, we get back in. Again, see it's complaining about these two, missing these two. And now if I click escape and I go to options, these options here get saved in that user config. And bizarrely, unless you actually use this first, it won't save them. It should save on by default, really, because obviously by default these already have values set to them. So that is strange. That's a little bug in my opinion why they don't do that. I'm going to click uh, back and then I'm going to click exit game. Are you sure you want to exit? Yes, I am sure. Do, 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 do. And I'm going to close this. And now I'm going to click run. Hopefully now we only get one error about missing game config and not a user config. Yay, you see? Now we've got a user config file that's been created and it's in the auto build folder. As well, you'd notice that there's a user.config when you go in there. All right, how do we get around that game config problem? Well, you can do one of two things. You can actually write your own uh, text file, game.config, uh, very simple, or you can do this the correct way and just pop over here, FPS sample, go down to build system and choose which one you want to build. I'm going to build a create Windows, uh, build Windows 64, and I'm going to click on that button. It's going to do some magic because when we want our build we don't want our build to be like we saw that at the quick start where it loaded straight into level one we want it to go into the menu we want people to be able to create their own games invite their friends have matchmaking working so to do that um this i think this is like a quick build not really sure it seems to do a build based on these settings here so maybe these should be beneath it i don't know Maybe they should be beneath, but it kind of feels like these arguments here are what it's expecting you to type into there. So if I wait until I finish this building player, it doesn't take that long. Uh, you can have a little chat with your mates, Google something, watch me on YouTube, many things you can do while you're waiting for this to build. Because um, your loved ones, uh, sing a song, anything you want to do. Okay, that's done. Now let's click open build folder. And you'll see I've got my auto build. This is the one we had before, use it config, everything looks nice. But if I go back and fold down, I see builds. There's a standalone Windows 64. And inside there, I've got another one. And that's what we just made now. And you see there's a game config and a user config file. If we just open this in Notepad. So here's my Notepad. I'm gonna drag in this file. You'll see all it says is client load level menu. I drag in the user. You see this is empty. If I pop over to the auto builds and I drag in my user config from this one, you'll see it's actually got some values and that's the one we had set. But you notice how in the builds here, by using the other menu, the user config does exist, it's empty, you won't kick up an error. Right, if I click here on this FPS sample, so let's load it up, make it big. Oh, see the circle loading? Now the experience is a bit different. We've got this funky lady running up, or a uh, man, I'm not too sure. And if I click on create a game, you notice how if I go in full screen, the UI is a little bit disjointed. See, now I'm able to click here on the create a game. If I go full screen, it's. Oh no. Okay, it's working. That was just the first time. That's odd. A little bit of a bug first time the button wasn't actually there so if i create a game now it's asking me for the firewall 
Let's say yes. Go big again. And you'll see I'm in. Fantastic. And other people can join me as well if they want. And that's the difference. One of them will kick you up weird errors about not having game configs. And the other one won't. But either way, you want to be playing about... If I click exit, you sure you want to exit, yeah. And there should be an option to go back to the lobby, not exit the entire thing. So, obviously, there's things that we could do in this project to make it better. That would be one of them in the menu. Instead of exiting the game completely, let's go back to the lobby and exit that match. There you go. Yeah, that should be solving most of your problems. You will have some more weird errors in the console. Um, most of those just disappear every time you stop and open Unity. If you find any errors that aren't on the uh, Unity forms or the GitHub issues, please do post them and let the Unity team know uh, bugs so they can fix them. Right, well, hopefully this helped someone because it was weird. It was I spent a lot of time trying to get this to work and wondering what these errors were all about in the console and why I wasn't getting config files. And it turned out that most of those errors were completely meaningless and I was running around in circles for no reason whatsoever. Hopefully you all will come and join me on live stream or the w.twitch.tv slash the messy coder and we'll be able to play this together, have a lot of fun shooting each other in the face and having giggles. So if you do like these videos and want to see more, click on that big juicy red subscribe button down below to all of your friends and neighbours. And if you do like it, click it. Till next time. If you want to see more of my crazy videos, click on the left side of your screen now. And down below, there's that big juicy subscribe button. And right next to it is the magic bell that if you click it, it will tell you if I've got a new video coming out. Till next time.